Wafu competition that's happening in Kumasi. We talked about it last week, and it's a big deal because, you know, last week we gave the GFA their flowers for women's football. This morning when I woke up, one of the first things I saw when I got onto my phone eventually on Twitter were the photos of the, 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 way, the way the girls Kumasi were kitted. Yeah. Charlie, mm-hmm. look. I, 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 M for <laughs> Charlie, you see the way the, the girls they wear Puma and no, yeah. I like it. Hey, yeah. Look at it. All spliff and speck. And speck. Mm. Nah, I'm happy for the girls. No, I'm happy. Nah, I'm sure I job by all them are looking and saying, Oh, oh Charlie! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Charlie! What Sweet happened girls? to us? Oh, that's a oh. question. What happened anyway, to us? Anyway, we can it's only progress. go for it. No, I really like how I mean they, from up and down. You know, they were wearing correct boots, yeah. correct yeah, yeah. shoes. The and combination everything. was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's speak to started. Ibrahim Sanidara. He is the director of communications for Wafu. And obviously, this tournament is the under-20 girls Wafu B championship. is starting in Kumasi tomorrow. Chief, good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Sanidara? Okay. I think we are not getting him. He should be on the line, but for some reason, we are not getting him now. We'll try and get him um, for that one. But guys, Charlie, um, anybody here have some information on the waffle? We talked about it. Uh, we know Benin Cote d'Ivoire coming into town, the Black Princesses. They too, they didn't really, you know, I mean, you meet Niger, you score them 11. You can't do that. <laughs> so, it's a friendly match. Gary, yeah. That's the best score line I've seen in my life. I heard you t- no. telling like this. No, it's hold true. On, hold on. Gary. Yeah. Unless you want to go into the archives of Ghana football. Yeah, there are plenty. When uh Kwame Nkrumah said the Black Stars go ahead in the fray, the Independence Day celebration of some Anyway, game, and what they gave them what? Four? Or was it eleven nil? I think eleven nil or so. Ibrahim Sanidar is on the line now. Ibrahim, thank you and good afternoon. Welcome to Game Plan. Good afternoon, Gary. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we've been talking about this all week on, especially our Joy Sport, you know, following the, the preparations, how the LOC has been saying that you are going to host a world-class event and all that. With just about 24 hours to go, how is it looking in Kumasi? It's looking really good. All the teams have arrived. All the seven teams uh, participated in the tournament have arrived. Um, we are yet to hit the the stadium yes we'll be doing it in three hours and i'm sure that like the loc has um perhaps made 20 girls tournaments being organized regionally um via the regional football associations and also television coverage is far and above what the other regions have done and based on what of what we've seen and the preparations of what we've been told of the production of the matches um, communicating back to our superiors at CAF it, it, people seem to be very very happy with what has been prepared on the ground so far Wicked, so um, what makes this tournament special and I noticed that it's being called the under 20 girls I saw some yeah. people debating but under 20 under 20, they are they girls or they are, why don't you say under 20 women or they are well, girls? <laughs> or they, yeah, women or female. But still, you do have some girls in there, don't you? Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. So, you so might have, post you know, 20 is women. Maybe female, maybe, maybe. But this was centrally decided. Um, as, you might, as you might be aware, a lot of these decisions for the regional tournament are directly taken by CAF. So the regional bodies have little wriggle room in changing or maintaining those names. So this is good feedback, and I think that if we raise these things, maybe um, those, the competitions departments at, at CAF would have uh, a real look at it. That was just, by the way, on a, on, I mean, on a more serious note, though, what does it mean for Ghana and our push, you know, we, we, we were giving the GFA props for how they've, they've given attention to women's football recently. What does it mean for this tournament also to be hosted here? I mean, it means a lot. First of all, it tells you that there's ringing confidence in Ghana that Ghana is able to host good competitions. Secondly, it shows that the GFA is on the right path and it's just, you know, taking all the boxes 
entrusted to host such competitions. If you if you look in this region, you have seven countries, and normally they won't take a risk. CAF won't take a risk, or the region itself won't take a risk to send a competition, particularly in its maiden edition, to a country that's not trusted. Imagine that touch wood. Imagine that. The tournament has gone to a country and then maybe for one reason or the other, the tournament is taken away. It, it, it just, you know, destroys the reputation of the country and the confidence of the football industry in the country. This clearly shows it's a ringing endorsement of what Ghana is doing, the progress Ghana is making, particularly in women's football. The last time Ghana hosted a cup competition was the under-17 boys. And when they left, even though the team itself did not perform um, as uh, to the expectation of all Ghanaians, but the feedback at the CAF level was that Ghana hosted a really good tournament. So when you know the, 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 this tournament came up for the running, it was clear we had we have countries in this region with good stadiums like Ivory Coast, like Nigeria these days. Benin also have. Um, some new stadiums. So th- th- there was a debate among the leaders that among these countries, uh, one of them should take it. And uh, overwhelming majority of the people thought that it should come to the in particularly in the way the in the country and also outside the country. I met someone from CAF who had a link to the under 17. Um, tournament. Who was this? He called me aside and said, "Look, it looks like it, it looked like we we're, were watching a tournament organized by CAF. The branding was good, the pitch was good, the spectating was, you know, uh, good. So for them, it was automatic that Ghana was a good choice for them." Thank you, Ibrahim, and all the best. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Um, Thank we, you we, very much, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll be giving you, as usual, giving you all the support that you need from um, our sister stations in Kumasi, Love FM in Shira, and even we here in Accra with Joy and Asempa as well. All the best. Well done, Gary. Your your focus on Ghanaian sports and Ghanaian football is well noted and well appreciated. It's the way to go, and your leadership is showing through clearly. Thank you very much, Gary. Okay. So, it's beginning under 20 guests. Wafu B Championship. The princesses are, 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 are holding the flag for us and we can only wish them the best. This is game plan. We are moving into another gear. My clock in the studio reads 13.33 GMT. All right. So, I was just coming on air when I saw this quote from Jose Mourinho. Charlie, the man just like fight. Who has seen Jose Mourinho's quote? Who has seen it? I'm not sure which one. I don't say what. The only teams that don't suffer mm-hmm. are those exceptional teams that have players worth 40 to 70 million euros on the bench. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For example, Julian Alvarez, Phil Foden, and Real Mares entered yesterday. We lose, we lose four to five players and we suffer. Here at Roma, it's coming in because it's their turn. We invested 7 million euros in the market and we are in the final. Yeah. Therefore, what we did is extraordinary. Who shared is this? Pep. Who shared is this? Pep. Who shared is this? Pep. Very unnecessary. <laughs> very very <laughs> factual. It is not factual. It's very factual. factual. Phil Foden is an academy product. Yeah, Julian Alvarez was less than 5 million. So what is he talking about between 40 and 60? Hey, 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 hey. didn't, didn't he have the same money at Chelsea? Did he win the Champions League? How much was the American Did he have a super power team at Real Madrid? How much was the American Laporte? He should enjoy his success and leave us alone. The fact is, he spent... Enjoy his success and leave us alone. If he's a man, he should win the Europa, will win the Champions League and will meet the Super Cup. If he's a man, he should win. The man spent 7 million euros. If he's a man, he should win. Hey, we are waiting for him at the Super Cup. The Champions League have you But you have right. You, thank no, you. No, no, the no, Champions League is have you know win finish. Charlie, I say I will pray to the prophetic. Do you want me to drop another one? You, Please do. You, you, you wait. No, 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 man. Gotta make it do. No, if you go do him, I go make you do him. You can't ask the prophet. If he here, we talk. You don't want to do that thing. When the prophet wants to do that, or what he say? When the time is right, the spirit will descend on you. Okay. All right. Hey, but Joseph, too. What can what can I share with this one? No, no, no. Sometimes, Joseph. You just need to take part of the headline. 
I know, Manchester man. City are in the final. Come on, let's say something. I mean, let me drop that in the middle. It's been a while since Jose has been in yeah. the headline for Papa. Yeah. Papa, 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 Papa. Yeah. Do you guys not, not think that what Jose has done with Roma in this season yeah. is bigger than what City have done? Look, this morning, it, no. was, a, when, it was a hot topic when on you my... Put, on my old school debate when they group, put the two, hot, when hot, they put hot, the two hot. side by side, yeah. AS Roma, mm -hmm. City have been building up to this for like 10 years. Okay. Roma have been nowhere near this for the last, if you like, five years or so. They've only had one season up and then down, up and then down. Jose comes, last year, they win in Europe. This year, it's another cup final with virtually no budget, expired players. So what, I'm not saying that Mourinho is better than Pep. I don't think so at the moment. Yeah. But what he's achieved with Roma this season, yeah. when he puts it side by side in context, the fact that he's not had the luxury to build a team of his own because there are no fans, I think it's a remarkable achievement by Jose. But the Roma team yeah. was not a, it's a decent team. It's not exactly cheap. That's sure. It's cheap. It's the most, probably most like, the most expensive team in the Europa League. You are in season. a tournament no, where your not. teams are on they the same level. Eh? No, wait. You are going to the final. You want us to, want to compare. No, wait. To wait, wait, wait. As somebody said, that in Europa League, you they play with right. teams where they, they, right. they get biblical names. That's <laughs> No, and that is why it is Roma. Thessaloniki and teams. That is why it is Roma. That's what I'm saying that when you put it side by side. Yeah. Ah, that Roma team is cheap, bro. Matic is free. Mm -hmm. He won't play in any top team in Europe again. No team want, no team wants the Dybala. The context is Europa. City. That's what I'm saying. So by Leverkusen. Yes. Have they been building up to this moment? No, they've not. That's what I'm saying that. When you Roma, Roma, uh, City have been building up like this. Oh, you Roma. see, you can't compare no, no, the no, metrics no, no, of Champions League. The comparison that you're trying to do is where I So the fact that you've woken up and you've gone to Europa semi final, you can't equate that to Champions. Okay, I beat the owners for Nilo. For Nilo. Wait. Four city have been there before. No, on their way to Roma, the doesn't final. lose semi finals by four goals to no. Nil. I mean, the score they don't lose different. four nil, the score, but Roma don't even play. I didn't in just beat Real Madrid, I Roma, started them. Roma, Roma, they don't play in European finals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter where it's conference. Manchester League. City also don't play in Europe. Ah, they've finals. been there before once, uh -huh, but they're there again. But last season, you won. That's you won when they are even. That's what I'm saying. That's what what Jose has done with them. Eh? One no, Europe, no. Sikyo, Roma. Sikyo, Sikyo. Roma don't win things. At least in 31 Sikyo, years. Sikyo, yes. Sikyo, I, it's I, like Fiorentina that are in the final. It's like Fiorentina that are so, so, I'm, so I'm not saying that Mourinho has coached better than Pep. No. Mm. But I'm saying that the magnitude of what Jose has done with this Roma team. This season. Mm -hmm. When you... Danny, do you agree? When you, when no, you, no, when no, you put... In, the history, no, what? in the history of Manchester City, yes. the first time they made a semi-final yeah. was Pellegrini's last season. Yes. In the history of Manchester City, yes. yeah. is that team a European powerhouse? No, no, you're talking about no, powerhouse. No, no, no. Pep has come in. He's not talking about powerhouse. He's done semi final. No, yes. but Sicho Suarez, to be fair. And he, no, we are comparing the two. So yes. we are comparing, okay, we are comparing last season and this season. Yes. Yes. And Roma. you say, have been there for last two And I'm comparing last three seasons, Manchester City. Pep has come. No, Pep came. He's, he did he, he, round, round of 16. Round, round of 16. 16th. Round of 16th again. Then he did then semi final. Final. Semi. Credit to him. Jose came. That's a final. That's a final again. And I'm saying that. I'm not saying Mourinho has coached better than Pepo is a better coach. True. I won't say it. Yes. It's not even true mm. at the moment. Mm. But what Jose has done with what he has at Roma, mm -hmm. what he has at Roma, when he put it on the scale, and what Pep has done with City this season, City being in the final is not a surprise this season. It is. Because, no, because in the last three years, they've been in and about it. It's that has been their level. It's a surprise. In the last three years. Roma, really Roma gets into the Europa League final. Nobody saw it coming. No. Okay. No. Like yeah. last season. Yeah. Only, yeah. Saw it. only last season. Only yeah. last season. They so were Europa Gary, League. So Danny, they were Gary, only Gary, Europa League. Gary, Daniel, Daniel, this, hold on. this comparison no, let, let, is no, 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 completely let's out of the window for me. So you are looking at two different competitions, two different teams. Coming up against opponents of different quality we, in the we UEFA Champions League. We know that. In the UEFA Champions League, the kind of opposition you play, you cannot compare but the way you play Champions in the Europa League. The amount of money you have, you cannot compare so the way you play in the Conference League. We are not comparing. The, not, you don't get the, You don't get the basis. The basis is this: What City have done in the Champions League? You are looking at it from the European League. level. No, not European level. I'm looking at it from impact based on the club and where they are or where they were, were coming into this season. I'm saying that, perhaps. Man City have been in and around the Champions League semi-final consistently in the last three seasons. Mm. It's been, they've been in and around, they've been consistent. Mm -hmm. Roma have not. Last season, they won the Europa League and that was the Europa League, the Conference, Conference League. League. This season, they're in the final of the Europa League and I'm saying that it's a significant because when you weigh it, where Roma have been, the fact that they've not been anywhere near this and all of a sudden, two back-to-back -back European finals, it's a huge achievement for the level of Roma. For the level of City in the context of this year, in the last three years, they've been in and around it. Last year, 
they lost out narrowly only two years ago they were in the final and this year they are in the final so they've been about the most consistent champions league team in europe in the last three years in the last three years they've been about the most co- even yeah, madrid so, so if you, you know if you contextualize it that like that's what i'm saying that 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 yes i'm not comparing <laughs> the two teams but if you want to compare I'm, the competition I'm not and, the, no, no, no. and the success of jose Mourinho no, no, compared no, no, to the other it's completely different i'm not comparing the completely different things i'm comparing the impact of the success you know the impact of the success that and i'm saying that for roma this is huge okay so so Sicho, your point is for me at this yeah. point we will let our listeners also weigh in Fantastic. all right we are on Fantastic. twitter we are streaming i didn't get time to do that in my intro we are streaming on facebook um and so shikome one of the biggest hit fm listeners was asking why we are we are always on facebook we are always streaming on facebook that's on the joy 997 page but they also cross streaming on the joy sports page mm-hmm. if you check my page we are, i've shared the link I'm sure, yeah. Um, Danny, yeah. Yeah. on your on your Facebook page as well. Uh, Sicho, please do that on your Facebook page, Muftar as well. We, too, we are sharing the link, right? Is Our it, own it, is it, not it, 12 it, midnight. It, it is that. Our own is not 12 midnight, but we are sharing the link. So, please, <laughs> share the link. Share the link. Share the link. We are streaming on Twitter Spaces also. Mm-hmm. And we are, uh, you will find this podcast, if for some reason you can't get it now, after the show, just about an hour after, you can get the audio version to download and, and listen on your jokes or uh watch my call it or you can watch the video again on youtube just about an hour after we are done you can now text on whatsapp as we have begun the argument what do you think of the magnitude of what jose Mourinho has done in the last season or two versus what pep has done in the last season or two with roma and Manchester City, Manchester respectively, City. in Europe. My question again: the National Science and Maths quiz. Yes. Question of the day. Question of the day. That's the question. Of That's the, the question day. of the day. <laughs> but, uh, what is the tune for the National Science and Maths? <laughs> so, Sicha School, uh, Danny Clanton School. This is your question of the day. What do you think of the magnitude of what Jose Mourinho has done with Roma in Europe this season versus what Pep Guardiola has done with Manchester City this season? You have 10 minutes. Start work. So, the number to text is 0302-216-541. 0302-216-541. That's how you can... T- oh, no. That, that's, that's, this. that's how to call. Sorry. 055 um, That's the WhatsApp line. Sure. 055-1111997, please. That's a WhatsApp line. You can text in and let's hear your thoughts. But today, the main meal, just so that time does not chop us, is this. Well, Pepe, without question, has got a fantastic work ethic about him. And he demands that from all his, his training sessions. So anyone who thinks they're not going to work hard, it say it wouldn't last long. You know, I'm sure of that. And he has got a great coaching ability, there's no doubt about that. It's, it's interesting because it'll be difficult, actually, to replicate what he did at Barcelona. Because it is a wonderful little triangle of players, Xavi, Iniesta, and Messi. I mean, Xavi and Iniesta, without doubt, they, 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 were, they were the best. When I had that great player skulls, and I looked at these two, that's exactly what I saw that ability to control in the middle of the pitch, the first touch on the ball, that angle of passes, you know, they were great. They were fantastic. And Messi combining in between them, you know, that he, he, he's never going to get that again. But a Bayern, not having as good a players, has still created some fantastic success, you know. And I think that, obviously, Man said they've done they've had a real coup in getting him because he is an outstanding coach. But Pepe won't find it as easy. You know, English football is not easy. And every every foreign coach has come to England will tell you that. Arsene Wenger, after a few months, he was talking about that. Even Jose, when he came, after his first season, he realised that what he achieved was hard work. So it will be a success. Uh, I don't think it will ever replicate what he did at Barcelona. But that's it's a high standard. You know, they were the best. We I had to face it twice in the European final. I mean, see what I could do with Xavi and Iniesta. That carousel of passing they've got, you know, you never touch the ball for a bit. 
three or four minutes. And when you get it, they're on top of you. Yeah, it was a great system. So that's, that's Alex Ferguson speaking before Pep Guardiola started his job at Manchester City. Now, there are two key things he acknowledged. He said at Bayern, no, three key things. He said at Barca, I mean, they did out of the world things. At Bayern, he did not have such consistency and quality, but they still did great stuff. And three, he didn't think that Pep will replicate what he did at Barca at Manchester City. Now, how many years down the line, we, I'm sure as part of your for and against argument as to whether Sir Alex Ferguson is a greater manager than Pep Guardiola, this will also figure. Meanwhile, we got this um, from Danny Mills on the argument about Pep versus Sir Alex Ferguson, the former English international. You have to start working out what do you mean by the greatest. Are we talking about purely number of times you win it? Are you talking about uh, length as well? How, how well you do over a number of years? You have to say, you know, what, what Arsene Wenger did probably in his first 15, 15 years or so was exceptional. You know, it was absolutely, probably until he moved to the Emirates, you know, was, was absolutely unbelievable, you know, what, they, what he did there. Fergie, I mean, 13 wins, 26 years, that's some record. That is, is that ever going to be beaten? I don't think so, uh, if I'm honest. Also, you have to look at what Ferguson did. Um, I, one, did it, won it three times in a row. How many times did, did, did they do the double? You know, Did they win it back-to-back? You, mm. you, you should know. You're mm. a Man United fan. A number of times. Yeah. But, um, so, again, so I think you've, to overtake Sir Alex... I think you're a way off that at the moment. People will talk about the style and the brand of football and the way he's changed things. Yes, granted, given that. Would he have been able to do that 10 years ago, play this sort of style? Um, like he was playing when he was first at Barcelona in the Premier League back then. No, I don't think he would have done. I don't think it would have worked because the game was too physical and referees used to let you get away with all sorts and and most of his teams would have been kicked off the park trying to play like that now you can't tackle people so you know and when he first, that first season he came that, that in Barcelona team did okay against English sides Chelsea Manchester United right Daddy Mills weighing in on that so let's come into the studio last week before we finished Danny and Sicho gave us their opening salvos and if I recall correctly Danny was team pep all the way um, Sicho was uh, Alex Ferguson. Moftao was supposed to be Team Ferguson, right? No, 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 no. Team Pep. Ah, Team Pep. Team How can Pep I support Ferguson? And I was ah. supposed to be Sir Alex Ferguson. The man who who gave us the portions is not here. <laughs> Fento Tahiru. He, he, we were just there and he just was up us and said, you, this, you are this. Come and talk to this guy. Come, come and talk to this one. He is not here. He is somewhere. He's chilling. Is that his message? He said, Assemble all your agenda against the <laughs> <laughs> You know it's, uh, what Fred will do was to pitch as like essentially come and kill them. Come and kill them. No mind. That's what Fred told me. That's what he told me. Essentially, you you know if he makes it, you finish you. It's a tiny king will get more for so come and kill him. <laughs> anyway, so we want to know, guys. So 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 the arguments are many. Um, some of you want to debate the whole Jose Mourinho impact versus Pep. <laughs> impact in the last two seasons so let me begin from there then i start taking your comments which are coming on pep versus alex ferguson um hope in oduma sukroba says to sit you why are you not getting it and that's um danny is right despite why are you not getting situ? Ah, why are you not getting situ? he's right he's right. He's he right. Is right yes despite you know the I fact that drink I back despite back the fact that i eat and drink barcelona Correct he believes that roma have done a better job under Jose Mourinho in the year under review. This one is from you didn't you didn't give us your name, Chief, but let me read it. I support what Sicho is saying all day. What Jose is doing is much more than what Pep is doing at City. In some way. Abanga Isifu from I Boku. For Lampard, he's just a mm, the I can't read the room is a day down. Uh, oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Abanga Isifu from Boku says Massa. Don't compare Jose to Pep. Pep is super in the world now. Oh, you comparing. see, that's not what we are talking yeah, we are about. Not comparing uh -huh. yes. Because otherwise, you, I mean, some way. Some way. 
Um, they didn't give us your name. Gary, good afternoon. I want to prove to Sicho that Roma has been building up to this. Roma has been very consistent in the Champions League. 2018, remember, yeah. Again, let me just that, that comeback. The, that, yes, that yes. one big thing, the place of good states, and when the AC and Inter were not some way. Don't they, forget they what they did up. to Barcelona. <laughs> this team has played in the Champions League quarter and semi final. It's a completely different team. They are actually playing guys below their league. Okay, yeah. so that, that goes to Batres um, Danny's point. Mourinho and Pep cannot be compared. This is from Danny from Afenia. He says, in terms of their respective squads, I will personally give it to Mourinho. He's a fantastic coach. Ampon from Cantonment says, Pep has been building this team for things like this since the first day he walked into the tunnel at the Etihad. Uh, this is the level they are supposed to play at. The real question is this. If City had failed in the Champions League consistently with this team, and Mourinho had also failed to reach back-to-back -back finals with this Roma team, who would have been quickly referred to as a failure, or better said, as an underperformer? Pep is great, but Jose makes it happen with what he has. And that is incredible. That is Ampon from Cantonment. Yo, 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 Gary R. Smith, what's up? <laughs> what's up to you too? <laughs> this is Hot Tea Red. That's the name of the person who has sent it. <laughs> ah! Is that tea bread? Is that his name? Tea is what's tea, tea bread? bread. Tea and bread. he has written O oh, Chale Ah with eagles. <laughs> <laughs> now to his main comment. Jose Mourinho, aka the special the special one, does not need money to win cups for a club like the way that fraud guy got called Pep always wants. The special one did do wonders with Porto, Inter, and he's now doing it at Roma. So please pardon my take. <laughs> but read <laughs> 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 He said the special one did do wonders with Porto, mm -hmm. Inter, mm -hmm. and now he's doing it at Roma. So please pardon my take. Hey, fantastico. But Mourinho is by far, far, far <laughs> better <laughs> than Pep, the front guy, because. Pep can never win the conference league set with <laughs> Roma. No, he... Hey, Charlie, hey, Charlie. Stay there. if the guy himself read it. Like, you're going to be brutal. Because the way the guy typed the team, you are reading his voice. The hat, head. the hat, he thinks put his head before he typed up, Charlie. <laughs> Stanley from Achimota says, Hello, Gary. Let's not forget that Carlo Ancelotti's Real Madrid went to the Allianz Arena and thrashed Pep's Bayern Munich 4-0 in the 2014 semi-final. Oh, yeah, fuck you. Let's not forget last year's semi-final also. So, yes, Carlo Ancelotti has also thrashed Pep before. And this one goes to Danny. Yes. I am Bismarck from <laughs> Kweu Asakra. What? From Kweu Asakraka. This one is a thesis. Okay. This one is a thesis. I think Pep has done really well and he deserves the credit for what he's done. However, I think what Jose has done with Roma has a slight impact over Pep City. And these are my reasons. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> hey, what, one, what to say has done is slightly. Is it? Is it? Is it? Why you are? No. Why you are doing that? Your project See, work. Do you know why? And you write one. One point one. One point one. One point two. But do you know why I like our listeners? Hey, they've been intellectual. They are the same. They are the same. See, this this way. And I like it. This way. Forget. You can't come and say something basal like that. They will roast you. They will roast you. But do you know the tagline of this station? Descending people are listening. Descending, listen, yeah. Descending people are listening. You come and say no. so. They will. <laughs> so wait. One. S for say ho. S for say ho. <laughs> Let's go. B for Betty Bo. That's it. <laughs> and right. for ah. So Bismarck <laughs> says his first reason is one. Pep's city has been consistent in Europe for the past six years. The first three, they were in the quarterfinal. The last three, they have been in the semi. Two. For the past three years, Pep City have been favorites to win the Champions League. That is, what they have been doing has always been expected of them. But they somehow managed to slip. Three. All these can't be said about Roma. They have never been favorites, but they are winning. Four. Mourinho has used fewer years to achieve this 
seat. Shall we invite the guy to come take my seat? I'm not going to do that. Hey, what be your name again? Go back to the name. Eh? We need the name again. Uh, the name was Bismarck. Bismarck. From Kwewu Asakraka. Bismarck, please come studio. Come, come, come take studio. Secure seat. Please. We, in fact, normally there are four people who sit there. So you, there's a seat for you. Kojo in Adenta says, Why didn't the Eagle guy mention his spell at Madrid? At, yeah. At yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before it was. No, it's selective memory. Selective, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy, you know no. the thing where somebody is your friend, eh? yeah. so you don't want to score them. Yeah. That's what I'm quiet. Oh, no, but Jose that's my very good friend. But before Jose but go got to Madrid, Danny, if we go Danny, Danny, four years running, no, yeah. no. they are not crossed the last season. Jose went there three years continue, semi-final. Back semi-final? Back. That yeah. is an it upgrade. It Jose yeah. who broke that semi-final. But for Jose, the Pep would have won. Before came and win the, the Liga, the, 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 the Oh, like you have won. Like we have done to the La Liga, what is that doing to the And in fact, in Jose's last two seasons at Real Madrid, he dominated Barcelona. Yeah. So that was where he was playing the likes of Alvaro Marota false. and Co. And Ocam. That is false. Because huh? that is very false. Huh? That is very false. Huh? Jose spent three seasons in the, in the, in the Liga. Yes. He won the league once. once. So you don't tell me his last two seasons he dominated Barcelona. Eh, that he season he took five. Or luck. Yes, he, he took five. Took yes, five. he took five. <laughs> they gave him five. He gave him five. Chewing. He was chewing his nails. <laughs> they gave him five. Relax, he Danny. Relax, my friend. Relax, so Danny. Do you recall this? 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 Do you He's not sure but can replicate again. Yeah. For Jose to have won the league again, the guy is on. Yes! Bro. Ah. But wait, 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 wait. You see, you boy, you are funny. Even your statement is proving how good you see Pep. No, yeah. but, uh, but because no, Jose, no, 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 no. no. That was, that was Jose no, Mourinho, oh, you relax. Jose Mourinho had Benzema. He had Di Maria. He had Cristiano Ronaldo. He had Kaka. Yes. You are sitting here and telling me that for Mourinho to beat Pep, then he has done something. No, they beat that Pep team. They really hate Pep. Team. Then you really that that pep team. No, no. For a whole Jose Mourinho yes. to be team. in charge of a whole Jose Mourinho. To that pep team. Consider the amount of money Danny, 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 no, no, no. Ah, no. Hey, I tell you, you see, you see, Danny, you've even forced your host to have an opinion and disagree. No, 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 no. My, my job is to provide some context. Yeah. Yeah. Look, that pep team, that pep team, in history, not even in the last 10 to in the history of football, Gary, let me tell you something. Gary, let's not go there. Gary, let me tell you something. No, you've not won it. I'm talking about Premier League. They're pep team. They're talking about Premier League. I'm talking about that pep team. So that. A whole Jose Mourinho in charge of Real Madrid yeah. who have the GOAT, Cristiano Ronaldo, Benzema, Di Maria, Sergio Ramos, but the other GOAT, but the other GOAT was all these boys. No, and you are telling no, me that for no. Mourinho to win that one season, it is such huge credit to him. Then I'll finish the deal. See, see, Gary. Then I'll finish. No, no, no. no. You better you go there. I like Sicho. Like like Sicho. Like like that Pep team, man. That Pep team. When we, when you are old enough and the grey is coming. Yeah. We'll catch the baby. We'll catch the baby. We'll, sit, we'll send them around uh -huh. and we'll tell them the story that there was a team in our generation that could play 100% possession. Nobody would touch them all. Yeah. Yeah. They, you uh, do you recall, uh, Gary, do you recall? Make your point and then let me read Inter Milan okay. versus Barcelona. Yeah. When Inter Milan defeated Barcelona and made the seminar sure. of the UEFA Champions League in 2010. Yeah. yeah. What team was that? Do you remember the five names? No, we, we, we remember. You see, we you can't, see, we can't see, do it inside. Collection. No, you see. Simple. Yeah. Go to that period. Check the head to head. You can't tell me you dominate him. Check the head to head. Me and that. Oh, everybody knows me. Oh, me. When it comes to Pep Guardiola, Gary, See, I am so who that became very poor. season. I am so <laughs> who became that poor. Very At season. that time, I didn't like Pep. Uh -huh. I couldn't stand him. Uh -huh. But I reached a point in my life. You see, so when the light hit him, he couldn't see. You understand? Yeah. The light hit him. So shall the thing is there. You mean that the mask of the moment? Oh, you see, can't hate see, the goat. See, you can't. You, no, see, you Danny, pass areas. Danny you is getting talk, everything but wrong. You can't hate that the very goat. season, Pep Guardiola defeated Barcelona 5-0. Yeah. When they, when it mattered most, when there was a trophy in front of them. Ah, so the league, the, was, there's no trophy. Relax, the league, relax. They flowers, I'm so. not. The league, they give flowers. No, no, Danny, hold on. That was a long, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. Not a sprint. When it mattered most, when there was a trophy in front of them, the Copa del Rey final, Cristiano Ronaldo scored the only goal in that season. They're good. And Real Madrid won that Copa del Rey. No, so, I understand you. Yes! But so it, 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 you, know, so why you know why Danny is funny me? Danny is so conflicted because on one hand... No, is it that's why I don't want to go there. <laughs> he, he, has to, he has to defend Pep who he likes. With Cristiano Ronaldo, who he likes. <laughs> Against Jose Mourinho, who he likes. Who he likes. With Pep Guardiola, who he likes. 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 Who he likes.
and for listen, look, I really appreciate that you are ta- you are taking time yeah. to sit down and write these very nuanced and intelligent comments. You know, it separates you from from the rest. And thank you, and, and it makes the show what it is. This one is from hey, Charlie. <laughs> Frank, come out. Look, we like the fact that you, you send us intelligent, but what you have written <laughs> by the time I finish, by the time I finish, <laughs> the short, the short time finish. Yes. <laughs> so you let me begin. Let me begin. So it's a letter. <laughs> Frank Karim has sent this um, book. This book, <laughs> he said this book. Okay, say pamphlet. Pamphlet <laughs> Magnitude between the two performances. The most coveted club trophy is the Champions League. You need to play the best teams. The Europa League is for the second string teams. Yes. Now, if you play in the Europa League, it means you are not there yet. That's your level. You are average. You are not good. You can't compete with the best. So go play with the average teams. That's where your strength is. So if a football fanatic says Mourinho's achievements have higher magnitude than Pep's, then I don't know. Mm. Talk inside the microphone. That's my guy. His name is Frank Kamal. Ah, Frankie. Uh, so he's co- he's continuing with um, 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 part part two of the book. Someone plays Bayern Madrid and routes to the final, losing none, shipping just two goals and scoring nine goals in the four games. How do you compare such an achievement to somebody who played Salzburg, Sociedad, and Feyenoord? My stomach is. But that's his playing. level. <laughs> Hold on. There's no debate here. He says. They say Roma had not made made a European final in 30 plus years. But City also had not made the Champions League final until Pep came. Thank you. Is that not an even bigger achievement? Money? Mourinho had a Galacticos and what happened? I saw. He had the money of Abramovich and we saw him got sacked twice. Mourinho's failures have sent him to Roma. Simple! And shout out to Karim. Oh, yeah. friend. Sweet Karim! Uh, uh, Hold on. Oh. So I didn't want to go to Frank oh. Kamal is a GIA student. Oh. Hey, oh. Give me his number. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey. This is why I didn't want to go to no, Daniel. Daniel. There is a reason Mourinho is in Roma. No, Daniel. There is a reason he's Daniel. at Roma. Uh, Frank. Uh, he failed at Man United. He f- even Tottenham sacked him. Nobody wanted him again. And no, he's going to Roma. Tottenham sacked him when he was yeah. going to win a trophy. But when he was going to play. He was going to win a trophy. Pep Guardiola. And they said, Boga, we know you need. So you need. <laughs> anyway, what? all right. So, guys, we have uh, Alex Ferguson and Pep, but the comments here. Yeah, but are given to Lolita. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. Today we have time. That's why we started early. Even if we start at two thirty, we'll finish on time. Let's read more of the comments. Um, uh, is it Ima from Pony or Emma? I think it's Ima. Emmanuel from Pony says, "Good afternoon, guys. I think Roma has done a great job under Mourinho with less years in charge, unlike Pep, who had to build his team for almost seven to eight years." If the so-called big team that Mourinho failed at, that is Real Madrid and Manchester United, had allowed him to play his system, which brought the glories to Chelsea, Porto, Inter, and now Roma, it would have been a success also. That is the map from Tony's take. Good afternoon, Gary and brothers. This is Don Askia from Malam. Mourinho is fantastic, but Pep is just marvelously fantastic. He makes football look worth watching. Ah, wait, wait, wait. wait. Let me see your DP. Guess what Korean DP like that. Let me see. Hard guy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hey. Oh, my God. See me, see me, Sire. So, let me smile. You see, because it's radio, it's a descriptive medium. Thank you. Now, Don Ash. You see, your your name crying, your DP crying. Don Askia hey. from Malam. So, Don Askia's DP... No, it is a, a man in a swimming pool. In a swimming pool. With a lady on the side of the swimming pool. Ah. And the lady is in a bikini. Oh, Charlie. And the lady is in some shorts. Oh, Charlie. And the woman is holding. Oh, Charlie. It's okay. It's okay. You see. Yeah, it's, it's, not not okay. Okay. it's not okay. And the it's woman is not okay. And the man is showing something on the woman on her mouth. Oh, Charlie. And the woman is showing the man something on Don't his mouth. Don't ask her. Don't ask her her mouth. Ah. Yeah, uh, you see the energy so of Danny. Huh? Danny said, where you, know, where you know even get girlfriends. Yeah, they do. Ah, That's ah. why I'm happy. That's why he's happy. <laughs> now, another comment. You didn't, you didn't give us your name, champ. Please give us your, be giving us your name. Uh, Ampon from Countryman is back. He says, Pep is second on this list. He has given us a list to download. Um, Pep is second on this list. 
but has the least signing among these. He spends bigly to make it happen. So the list he has given us is, let me read it, the highest spending managers in football history. Um, and this is from Transfer Market. Jose Mourinho has spent the most, 1.85 billion euros, mm -hmm. over 116 players. So he has used 1.85 billion euros to sign 116 players. Pep Guardiola has signed 74 players with 1.79 billion. Carlo Ancelotti, wow, I would never have guessed it. With 90 players, um, he has used 1.49 billion euros to sign 90 players. So that is his argument that Jose Mourinho has spent more than Pep, Pep Guardiola. Uh, but it means that Jose was signed, uh, signed uh, with like players who are not good. 146 players. Allah, why? Because he was rebuilding teams. Pep, 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 Pep has, that is very false. That is very that false. Z, Gary, I beg you. Uh, the thesis I have here against Sir Alex Ferguson, if we start, we'll trigger the Man United fans, which I want to do, because there's been some serious falsehoods in the world of football. I don't want to touch Jose. Jose is my very good friend. You understand? I don't want to touch Jose. So we just deal with Ferguson. Maybe with time, the Jose people will humble themselves. Because I told you, see, the message is clear. The good news is there. Why don't you want to accept it? Why? It's clear. Why don't you want to accept it's clear. it? What the guy has said. It's clear. Jose signing more players with that amount of money. If you do the ratio to the number of players, and when you also put it in context, the place where Jose has been, he's yeah. normally been in place where he's building yeah, teams. He's, 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 had, he's, he's had to create his identity into teams. He's had been to at least two places where he started a settled team or his core players from his academy, like in Barca. Yeah. He's using Busquets, he's using, you know, the boys that are there. Yeah. He didn't have to spend so when much. When he came, he had when to he came to, when he went to Bayern Munich, it was a more settled cool. team. They didn't have to spend much. Jose went to Chelsea, he had to spend because he was building something else. He went to Real Madrid, they were building their new set of Galacticos. He came to Man United, he had to rebuild after, you know, LVG. So you have to put all of that in, into I don't, honestly, I don't buy the, you are spending money, spending money thing. Because the assignments are different. Yeah. The assignments are very, if another manager comes to take over from Ten Hag, if he doesn't spend money, he's not serious. On this Man United team. Yeah, we'll spend you know, uh -huh. we'll spend yeah. yeah. Hello, Every manager will spend Hello, Joy Game Plan. Um, Barbara from Tema. Hi, Barbara. Oh. As the biggest citizen in Ghana, Frankie has just made my day. Oh, Frank Kamal uh, with his argument. Please, Gary, this is Natalia. Ah, is Natalia around? She has been missed from Mutala. I don't know who Natalia who is. is. Oh, who is Natalia? No, I understand. Ah, so you understand? No, Gary, uh, you're referring Danny. to Danny. Why are you pointing at me? You. Who Where's is Natalia? <laughs> who is Natalia? Since you ah. do know who Natalia is. Michelle, ah. do you know who Natalia is? No, uh, we don't know who Natalia is. Mutala, please, from Asamangesi, I'm sure it's Mutala. No, Mutala. we all know Natalia. I'm very, I'm very confused. Uh, uh, Mutala, please send us further and better particulars. <laughs> Hi, Gary. <laughs> I'm, I'm Prince from McCarthy Hill. Please, was it the same pep that eliminated eliminated Jose from the 2010-2011 Champions League. Yeah, the same Pep. Yeah. If Pep had the experience that Jose had right from his days at Barcelona, Pep would have been unstoppable, even with his those few years from 2008. And again, 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 but but just before that, again, just before that, Jose two. also knocked him out and won the 2010 Champions League. Final. Again, so we are not comparing the two. We are not comparing the two. Yeah. Coco Ninja from Osua sent us this. He says, hello, Joy Sports. Man United fans are very scared because Man City are about to break two of their cherished records with Chuck and Ferguson. Sorry? Winning the treble this season <laughs> and winning the premiership back to back to back. <laughs> Coco Ninja in Osu. Which brings me to the point. I agree that I believe Pep Guardiola is the best coach ever. Fergie earned the right <laughs> to spend the money. What this man's doing is crazy but it burns right me all right guys 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 the, the the jose and the and the pep set the tone for our main agenda that, that was just a first course now this is the main meal the context is that of course manchester city have shown they have shown an unprecedented you see they are the team of the year anywhere in the world we know that but to beat the team of the century the way they have in the semi-final of the Champions League is something special. And they did that with revenge on their minds. Now we know. The pain of last season is what spared them on to do what they did to Real Madrid. Danny, 
as your reward for predicting that Manchester City will beat Real Madrid in the second leg by four goals to nil, please, Pep versus Alex Ferguson, who is the greatest manager of all time? First of all, Gary, I want to say thank you for my stone, um, for somebody to sit in the studios of Joy FM in Kokomlemle and boldly say that Manchester City will score four goals in the second leg and beat Real Madrid by four goals to nil. It's crazy. But when you operate in the prophetic, when you say some things, oh my God. Amen. It has come true. Amen. Now they are looking at me. You are looking at me. I'm waiting for explanations. When they reached the semi final, Ancelotti was there calling uh, uh, Maldini that me to see you in Istanbul. You are not serious. You are going to face Pep Guardiola and you are telling your somebody in the other semi final, see you in Istanbul. Go sit in the stands and watch us play the final. We've prepared two seats for them at Istanbul, the presidential two. They will sit there, Maldini and Ancelotti, and they will watch us play the final. And we'll lift the trophy in front of them. Gary, when I finish this admission, they are going to revoke my Manchester United supporters' forms. I'm telling you. Because Ferguson is about to be exposed. Let's remove narratives, okay? And let's look at facts. Facts can never be changed. Narratives, they change over and over and over and over again. Let me give you an example. When Jose Mourinho came to the Premier League in his first two seasons, there was this crazy narrative. Wenger said it. Fergie said it. He's buying the league. Chelsea were buying the league. Today we are sitting here. Mourinho can create teams. He can. You see the way it has changed? Mm -hmm. So let's look at facts. There's this false narrative about Sir Alex Ferguson that he won his trophies with academy graduates and average players. Big lie. A big, big lie. Sir Alex Ferguson literally monopolized the Premier League because of the spending and financial power he had at Manchester United. And the records are there. It's clear. I will not lie to you. Let's start from 1989. Oh. I'm not talking about 2000 and something. 1989. The year Arsenal won the league. He bought Mark Hughes. Mark Hughes had left Manchester United to Barcelona. Mm. He brought him back for 1.8 million pounds. That was the second most expensive transfer in British history. The same year, he broke the British record transfer. He brought Gary Pallister for 2.9 million pounds. So in the same season, the same transfer window, he has done second most expensive and most expensive. Three years down the line, Roy Keane, 3.7 million pounds, British record transfer. So Fergie broke his own British record transfer and signed Roy Keane from Nottingham Forest to Manchester United. Now, the story behind Roy Keane's transfer from Nottingham to Man United is a very interesting one because it buttresses my points and shows you how Man United had crazy financial power and could literally walk and bully any team to surrender their best players. And I intentionally didn't take the, the transfer story from any other side. I took it from the Manchester United side. Now United, I think a couple of years ago, they decided to be giving us backstories of some of their transfers. They didn't know they were exposing themselves. But let me start. It says, in the summer of... This is from my United's website. MyUnited.com. In the summer of 93, Nottingham Forest firebrand Roy Keane was every player, was one player every team wanted to sign. Operating as a box-to-box -box midfielder or even a center half at times, at the age of 21, he looked every inch of a world-class performer in the making. Arsenal were long-time suitors, but Blackburn Rovers moved into poor position and they actually thought they had broken a deal. Keane even agreed to move to Rovers. After shaking hands with Kenny Dalglish, who was the then manager of Blackburn Rovers, he had given him his word. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The bully, Sir Alex Ferguson, called Roy Keane, and there's a quote, I agreed a deal and shook hands with him. That is Roy Keane speaking of. He said, I went back to Cork, and on Sunday morning, woke up and I got a phone call. Sir Alex told me, come to my house, and we'll meet for talks tomorrow. That was it. Nottingham Forest 
as a sorry, Blackburn Rovers didn't have 3.7 million pounds to pay. So Roy Keane had to go to the team that had money. Two years later, Manchester United set another record transfer. And Deco from Newcastle United. The season after Andiko had set the 34 goals in a season, the record that Haaland just broke. Mm. He was the best striker in England at the time. He and Alan Shearer. And you people all know the stories. Mm. Fergie wanted both of them. And he ended up having to settle for Andiko for £7.5 million. Pounds. Then British record transfer deal. The following season, Ferguson goes to Norway, goes to buy Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, makes him the most expensive Norwegian transfer at the time and brings him to Manchester United. The same season, Ferguson goes to Tottenham Hotspur. And if you know at the time, let me just paint the picture for you. Fergie now has Andiko, he now has Sosha, there was Alan Shearer, there was Teddy Sheringham. They were the hottest strikers in the Premier League at the time. Mm. Ferguson goes to Tottenham and tells them, hey, surrender Sheringham. Because I want to win another title. Tottenham said no. And they said if Man United wanted to sign to, uh, Sheringham, they needed to pay £6 million. Pounds. The records are there and they are clear. Sheringham then came out and made his transfer request public. So it forced Tottenham Hotspur's hand to half the price. And he left Tottenham Hotspur to Manchester United for £3.5 million. Pounds. So now Ferguson has Sosha, he has Cole. He has Sheringham. And this is a man who plays two strikers. So it means one of them is sitting on the bench. But this is somebody who was winning with average players, right? Let's continue. The following year, Dwight York was breaking... Look, he was banging in goals for fun at Aston Villa. One of the best strikers in the Premier League. New image top striker in the Premier League. What did Ferguson do? £13 million. Pounds. The second most expensive transfer in Britain at the time. Or second only to Alan Shearer from Blackburn to Newcastle. Ferguson went to bring him. So now, Ferguson's Manchester United had three of the top four strikers in the Premier League, all in his team. Most expensive, yeah. Most expensive too. That is cool. The same seasonal. But the, look, this one is so interesting. After buying Dwight York, literally the following week, oh, Gary, the following week, oh, Yap Stam from PSV Eindhoven, 15 million pounds, joint with Alan Shearer, another record. Two years later, Fabian Bates goes to buy him straight after Euro 2000, makes him the most expensive goalkeeper of all time. At the time, oh, yeah. Now, at 2000, I'll take a break and just give you some context. When you look at the top spenders in the Premier League, yeah. from when the Premier League changed their branding, so from 92 up to 2000, the average top spenders in a season, they were spending about 19 million pounds every summer or every season when you add everything. In 2000, everything changed. When Ferguson elevated his spending muscle, and became the first manager, and the Man United became the first club to spend over 50 million pounds in a single transfer window. They spent 58 million pounds. Who did they go and buy? Ruth Van Nistelrooy from PSV Eindhoven. 19 million pounds. The same transfer window, one Sebastian Veron for 21 million pounds. British transfer record. <laughs> you know the funny thing about that season? Do you know who won? 2000. Yes. 2000, 2001. Do you know who won? Tell us. The only man with a record and legacy that nobody will, will, will be able to touch. Mm. And he didn't build that record with money. My own man. Papa Venga. Yep. Went a whole season unbeaten. Did it 49. Only to be robbed by referees and Manchester United at Old Trafford. I watched that game as a United fan. And to today, I don't understand why we won that game. Rob. <laughs> Let's proceed. Because of agenda. <laughs> 2002, the following season, Ferguson goes to Leeds United. There's a top class centre back who is troubling Premier League teams. His name is Rio Ferdinand. 
Ferguson goes to buy him for 22 million pounds. Another British record. Most expensive defender at the time. The following season, and this is where the narrative, you know, I said, you see, let's look at facts. Too. People will come and try and change you on this one. And this story, you are hearing it for me, Daniel Cranton, the biggest Cristiano Ronaldo fan in the history, you see, in the whole world, nobody, past and present. Manchester United went to buy a superstar from Portugal, young boy, by the name of Cristiano Ronaldo. They spent 13 million pounds. Do you know, should I put it into context? He was the most expensive teenager in the history of football at the time. 13 million pounds for an 18-year-old. Now, the story behind that deal is Arsenal had scouted him for months. And Arsenal had more or less had an agreement with Sporting Lisbon. But the money was less than the Arsenal could in Venga. Charlie, where is he going to get 13 million pounds for an 18-year-old? So Ferguson goes, bullies his way, and gets the boy for 13 million pounds. Most expensive teenager. The following season, Ferguson breaks that same record by buying the hottest English talent in the league, Wayne Rooney, for 27 million pounds. Two seasons later, Ferguson goes to Portugal under 20 World Cup superstar Anderson. He's in Porto. Ferguson buys him, 19 year old, crashes Rooney's record. In fact, equals it. 27 million pounds for Anderson. The following season, Dimitar Berbatov is in Tottenham Hotspur, yeah. troubling teams in the Premier League. Ferguson plucks him from Tottenham Hotspur. In fact, forced his hand. Tottenham actually wrote, a, they, they, they issued a written complaint to the Premier League on how Man United conducted themselves on that deal. Because Ferguson, whilst negotiations were going on, and the courts are there, he went on publicly and said that Berbatov had agreed to come to Man United. Somebody's play out. <laughs> Somebody's play out. Because you want to snatch him from Tottenham Hotspur. Charlie, Ben Market, million pounds. Oh! <laughs> 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 I absolutely love what that means. In you 2011, I, I mean, I see you are not into Ferguson this. goes on <laughs> to buy David De Gea, mm -hmm. a keeper who has had one season top flight experience in Spain, was one of the hottest goalkeepers in Spain at the time. Real Madrid were watching him. Ferguson pays 18 million pounds for him, makes him the second most expensive goalkeeper of all time at the time. Yeah. 18 million pounds. So if somebody tells you that, man, you paid a bargain fee, it's a lie. He was the most expensive goalkeeper to come to the Premier League and the second most expensive goalkeeper of all time. Second only to Joao Luigi Buffon. Yeah. Phil Jones, that same season. Phil Jones, who has retired only yesterday. Manchester from, United, from United paid £17 million for Phil Jones, making him the second most expensive teenager of all time. Second only to Wayne Rooney. Another Man United signing. So, yeah, so your, 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 your point is, yeah. no, you have used five you. minutes to debunk yes. the average that... Isn't, isn't it isn't more than five minutes, like ten minutes. Ah. Okay, okay. Let me learn. There's like, more time you put for time for top. There's, there's, there's more time, time for you. Time time day. Day. Don't, Don't worry. Day. Plenty of time day. Okay. Let me put it into context. That's why we started the debate early today. Fantastic. In the Premier League at the time, yeah. if you look at the financials of the various clubs, go to the Forbes richest teams list. Man United, Real Madrid. Man United, yeah, Real Madrid. In the Madrid. world. Man United's financial power as compared to the rest of the English teams, the gap was so huge. Yeah. So United literally could walk into any club who to threaten them and take their star player as a break. Guarded his team with the biggest and the best players in, in, in England. And the world. And the world. Yeah. And was winning league after league after league after league after league. That's false perception that he won his leagues and his Champions League with. Uh, uh, academy players and uh, this is the starting 11 for the team that played the 99 final. Shemaiko was in post. He bought him. No academy player. Erwin Johnson. In fact, let me just read the academy players. There was Guy Neville, Beckham, Nicky Bat, who wouldn't have started if King was fit. Mm. And then uh, uh, what's his name? And Giggs. Four academy players. Class of 92. Class of 92. The narrative is that the team was sort of built around these people. That's a big lie. That's a big, big, big one. Roy Keane 
was a solid member of that team. Mm. The front two literally had the that was the best combination wise. And you call and Dwight York, the mm. kingpins of that team. Sir Michael, solid kingpin of that team. Yapstam, the core of that team was were not uh, uh, academy. academy boys. The only one you can add is uh, uh, schools because schools' suspension was talked more like. It was like if scores didn't play man you were in trouble yeah so he was like a key guy but when you go through man united teams over time the core of the players in those teams were never academy boys 2008 the starting 11 had one academy player in that team it was paul schools the rest of them million dollar buys ferdinand village evra carrick hargreaves ronaldo tevez Rooney, money so if you want to Pin Pep down and say he's literally buying his way to the titles. This is what Monopoly looks like. You mean Ferguson showed him the way? Ferguson showed him the way. <laughs> and and taught him see, how to do it. As football progressed, if you watch the final, the numbers are there, they are clear. When Abramovich's money came to Chelsea, it started changing. Yeah. He, bl he, bl he blew the concept of normality apart. Thank you. Yeah. There was now a third force. And you see, in all this, I'm not mentioning Wenger as somebody who was, because that is a true legend. That is a maker. He makes a way when there seems to be no way, as in Venga. Mm. He makes championship winning teams with coins. Around the time Abramovich's money came, there was a change. Mourinho comes, he wins the league. Remember, the Barclay card deal had come. Sponsorship money, TV deal. Mm. Money started going around the Premier League. So we started seeing more foreign managers. We saw teams like uh, Liverpool at the time. They went to pick uh, Benitez. They could go and attract some of the top players Gerard, around the Gerard world. Hulley and Gerard Huli. You go and look at even Tottenham. They went to pick, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Berbatov and Co. Uh, 2007, more Arab money came from Man City. Money is going around. So now more forces are being built. Fergie started struggling there. You understand? Now, he couldn't walk up to Man City and say, give me your star player. Because Man City don't need that money. Yeah. They don't need your money. They have money now. Chelsea don't need your money. Chelsea don't need your money. Mm. So the big teams will Spurs able to don't stand need your account. money. Yeah. Aston Villa don't need and your that money. Is Liverpool won't sell to you. Don't Which sell to you. you. Yeah. That is the era that Pep Guardiola has found himself in. That Jose Mourinho found themselves in. Klopp has found themselves in. All of them are spending you. Yeah. But there's no monopoly. Because nobody is crippling anybody to become a powerhouse. That is what Ferguson was doing. And that is a serious problem. Now, when you look at even how he was winning, and that's just what even makes Pep the good. If you look at how Ferguson was winning the league titles, ah, 79 points, 80 points. Ferguson's highest ever point tally was 92. Yeah. And that was a 42 game season, oh. 42 game season, 92 points. Jose Mourinho came, his first season, he did 95, he broke it. He said, ah, ah this is the record for here. He said, you go, 95 points, he broke it. When the Invincibles, Papa Venga, he did it in the 38 season, 38 game season. Yeah. He did what? 90 points that season. If they had played one more match, 93, we do record it. Simple. That's my point. Look at the points tallies you were winning with. Whilst crippling your opposition, you know, crippling your main rivals, you could even win it clear. Pep has come. 93, 98, 100 points. Somebody is getting 97 points, they are not winning league. Somebody is getting 92 points. They are not winning league. That is the standard that Pep has taken the Premier League to. Which is the teams that were respectively second in those seasons you. you mentioned. Pep Guardiola, before he came to the Premier League, you played some of the voice. But it's like maybe because of the accent people didn't hear. So I'll say it with my Ghanaian accent. So that the locals can understand me. When Pep was coming to the Premier League, Ferguson said he's not sure he'll be able to replicate that side. The Premier League is not easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five out of seven. You are doing three in a row on Sunday. That legacy that you say you've left behind, you boom. June 10, treble with equal dates. Sir, uh, Sir Cecil Jones, I took with you while you treble. Pep will become the second manager in history to do treble twice. Uh, what's his name? Jose Mourinho, while you treble. When you are talking about legacy and you want to be considered the goat, you have to do something that nobody can do. Nobody can do. Has anybody ever gone a season and beaten? That is a legacy. And the man did it when his main rival was crippling him. 
five points. Where will be there? Oh, Larry, where will be there? No. Hundred points, the centurions. You see, the people with legacy, they have names. The invincibles. The centurion. <laughs> you what is your name? Fergie time. The trebler. Fergie, Fergie, Fergie time. We have Fergie time. Ferguson is a top guy. But when the thing is clear, you see, guy, I will not come and sit here and lie. My face will not allow me to sit on this platform <laughs> and lie. No, 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 no. When I come on this very distinguished and prestigious platform, Joy 99.7 FM, this beautiful seat that I'm sitting on, I can't come here because my employees are paying me to come and be factual uh, and that, objective. Is that where you are sitting where? In this beautiful uh, uh, jo place for me. Joy 99.7 I like Joy. it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't come and sit here and lie when the truth is telling me in the face. Right, so be, please. But see, Joe, be whining now. He's not an employee. So maybe <laughs> he will come and sit here <laughs> and lie. So allow him to sit here and lie to you. Oh, you see, no, oh, guy, guy, why are you it's setting, okay. why are you setting uh, a man up? Do you recall what we're doing debates in school, right? Yeah. When you are finishing, you have to you have to throw a party. You have to throw a party. Yeah. <laughs> let them know that so, the judges will know that no 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 you what you are coming to do is very useless. I agree. What Danny has done is to take Sicho's main protagonist, Sir Alex Ferguson, throw him under the bus literally, and then build his own points. When he's finished, he's now setting you, the listener, up to not believe anything Sicho will say. Now, just like a lawyer will say, you see, in a grand jury. We tell the jury before the, the hearings begin, eh? We admonish them that everything and every decision you make in this court should be based on the facts that you hear in this court. Don't let anything outside this court. And so that is what we will let our listeners know. Danny wants to instigate you against against each other with external forces. Listeners are listening. Discerning listeners. But we know our listeners are discerning. You can you can tell when you are being baited. Anyway. So Danny had 15 minutes to uh, give his submission. Sicho, you can. We, we have time. Right. <laughs> you can do 5, 10, 15 as well. So I'll be, lay your points. I'll be brief because this matter is not a debate. Hey! There's no, no, there's no discussion. Hey! And I absolutely want to applaud Danny for making the work simple because he went over the whole period of Ferguson, praising him for having a good eye for quality players, signing them and making the most of them. You see, all the players Danny mentioned, and I'm even surprised that he was, he was actually hyping Ferguson's ability. Mm. Because the players he mentioned, and the co, the battle, the Atigo, King, everything. But all the players he mentioned, apart from maybe four of them, Anderson wasn't great because of his injuries, jo uh, Phil Jones, uh, Sebastian Veron, all of the other players that he spoke about. In that Man United team, when well, Ferguson had scouted them and I brought them in, the impact clear. That is a mark of a great coach anyway. So I'm just happy he was hyping Ferguson all over the place. But now let's go back to the main issue. And then he spent more time talking about Fergie than to tell us Pep and what Pep has really done for us to spend more time on Fergie because sometimes you have to cripple the goods so that you when you when you catch up the legs, he can stand on his knees and match up to the head of the bowed one. You see, if, if the goat is standing in the door, if I cut the leg, make, make it fall on him. He's not saying, you go fix it up and pay more of the ones that are So he spends all the time cutting Ferguson's. But let's, let's talk about Sales Ferguson. He's the person I want to talk about and tell you why, in my opinion, he's the greatest, mm. or factually, he's the greatest Premier League coach ever. Yeah. To a large extent, the greatest football manager ever. You see, and I'm happy with the way he started. But I've always said that when people talk about South, the first thing they remember is Man United. And that is why when Danny speaks about the fact that uh, Pep, there's, there's a perception that he's signed players and all of that. That perception, it is true. Mm. But I'll come to it. So let's focus on this time is coaching for Man United. Mm. It's been something that has been consistent throughout, throughout his career. Ferguson is a fixer. And the most difficult thing to do in football is to build your own system. When I talk about system, it's not tactics. Yeah. The most important thing in football is to build a culture. Yeah. A winning culture. Mm. It's to build an environment where 
find a platform where people can thrive. Where Ferguson started his coaching. I won't even go to St. Mary and I'll start from Aberdeen because St. Mary's have you won the division something there, but division something. But in Aberdeen, you see, people don't even know that Ferguson till now is the only coach in Scotland in the Scottish division that has won the league or the cup who hasn't coached Celtic or Rangers. Like in Scotland, it's like in Ghana. If Kotoko and House were winning every other season, and another manager wins with Ebusia Dwarfs. And it's been like 50 years. We are going to talk about that manager as he's the only manager to have won the Ghana Premier League with the FA Cup. Without coaching got all has. In Scotland, he's the only manager that has won the championship or the cup or the Scottish Cup without coaching Celtic or Rangers. He did it with Aberdeen. He still is the only manager to beat Real Madrid in an European final. He did it with Aberdeen. In the Cup Winners' Cup. Now, the reason I'm building the premise, we are talking about the premise, I want to build the premise from there. When he took over Aberdeen, Aberdeen were nowhere near dreaming of winning anything. But like I said, he's a fixer. He builds. And he himself will mold it from the ground. In, when Ferguson was in Aberdeen, at some point, he could wrestle or he could wrestle with Celtic and Rangers to get some of the best players around Scotland. You know why? He had built the platform, gradually built a culture, that could make money in terms of Aberdeen. So the money Ferguson is spending, he is part of those who made the money. Mm -hmm. And part of his coaching is to create an environment that makes money so that he can spend. Like, it's, it's, there are different things though. There's a difference between a country's pumping money for every manager at a certain club. Yeah. There's a difference between in a certain club in a certain country. They monopolize everything. They have the money more than anybody. And somebody who helps make money. Or he himself finds a way of making money. Ferguson made money, the money for Aberdeen so that they could spend and compete. Yeah. That is the reason why when my United brought him in, they didn't bring him in into the Premier League to come and coach a team that was winning. They didn't bring Ferguson in to come and coach a team that had just made the Champions League semi-final from their previous manager, Pellegrini. They didn't bring in Ferguson to come and coach a team that had a Premier League winner from Mancini, an FA Cup winner from him, and a Premier League winner from Pellegrini. No. Good point. They brought him into a team that were on their knees. A crippled, a team that was struggling. Mm. A team that was down because they knew that it's not only, Ferguson's ability is not only about winning in 90 minutes on the pitch. Or standing on the pitch and throwing his hand about like he was an economist. In fact, one of the first people who, who, who redefined coaching and turning into being a manager was yeah. Alex Ferguson. Because he managed the club to the extent that the plotting in making money to spend, it was through him. Yeah. So when you only pick the spending part and you don't talk about how they made the money, you've missed the point. Yeah. You've absolutely missed the point. You see, that is why when you praise Aston Wenger, I like it. Yeah. Because, because Wenger is if Wenger, widely regarded as the second, maybe the second person who did it as successfully as. If Wenger didn't even at the point agree that Charlie... Let's sacrifice the spending and build the Emirates. Emirates, yeah. Venga could have probably won more than you won. I agree. I agree. So, so that that is so when they're talking about managers, that is the level. Coaching is different. We're talking about the greatest Premier League manager. If like add coaching, and I'll come to that one too as well. You have time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll, oh, come to that one too as well. See, now Ferguson comes to Man United. The team is bad. Like people don't remember. You see, Gen, Gen Z and Twitter babies. It's difficult for them to remember what Man United were like at the time when Ferguson came. Please remind us. The team wasn't good. The team wasn't winning. The team didn't have a culture. The team were full of old boys who thought that you didn't born a boy at home. And, drink, and a drinking culture. And drinking all culture, partying, baby Bruce girls, men, and things. Bruce men. Ferguson walks in into a club like Man United and says, Kodong stopped. There was no culture at the club that gave them the platform to win. Now, Ferguson from the scratch, Ferguson from the scratch, built it. Ferguson from the scratch. And for many years, my United had not won the Premier League. They were not winning. He built it. Now, when he built that platform and realized that, you see, I can't always trust that I can bring in players to come and do the job for me. Mm. So let me groom players 
in my own making. You see the way God was going to create the earth and say, like, Charlie, call the, ah! angel, call the angels and say, like, listen, Charlie, the jata is not like us. Catfish is not like us. <laughs> Horse is not like us. Tilapia. Tilapia, no be like. So let us create something in our own image. Kukurudu is not like us. <laughs> Perfect. So Ferguson decides that instead of building a whole team of buying superstars, yes, I'll buy, identify some people, which is part of management, identify some people who will help. But let me now focus on getting some of the best players around Greater Manchester, even go to London, and then bring them in, and then train them in his own image. Hence, the class of 92. Now, let me say this. From the time Ferguson started that project, till the time he retired, in each and every single year that he was successful, somebody from that culture was part, or people from that culture were part of the club. It's not as if he built a system that broke down. Throughout his successful period at Man United, from 92, coming down to the time he retired in 2013, the, the, the key people, his leaders, his people who could transmit his ideas were all coming from that class. That is a guy who has a vision. He has a plan. He has, like, he knows exactly what he's doing. And look at the players he built. The greatest players in the history of the Premier League. All of them are there. David Beckham. Paul Scholes. Ryan Giggs, nobody says something, something with their wife, so guess what? Like, Premier League Hall of Fame. He's number one. He's number one. Ryan Giggs is a big but, Premier but League legend. Like, uh, forget his goals. Just take away the, the off-pitch issues. and he's Yes. Like, See, the, the boys like Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, David Beckham, Gary Neville, Gary Neville Phil Neville, <laughs> Nicky Batts. Like, these are boys who... Over Gary Neville, I never thought he was a good footballer. Oh, yeah. see, he managed, even though he knew he wasn't a proper footballer. Yeah. You see, I don't like coaches who can't coach people who... See, he, in, he, in he, every he, class, yeah. you will never have all of all, everybody being brilliant. On the same level. But great managers and great coaches and are able to make people who are average a part of a good class. Yes. Yeah. That's some coaches. You come no, you don't know, play good, throw you away, make you disgrace you. Even if you're a legend before you came, you come, you tell people you can't play the ball with your feet, your heart. Go away. Go away! Because yeah, 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 you don't want yeah, to play. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You want to show power that even if you can sack your heart, then who are you? Eto and things. Eto and things. Zlatan and things. things. Zlat Charlie. Defo, Ronaldinho, and Coach. See, Ronaldo, you know, sack them all. Sack them all. Because... He doesn't have what it takes to blend people who are average with ah. Uh, oh, Palermo, if you coach average players, oh. Like Sergio <laughs> Busquets from the academy. He wasn't average, oh. Special talent from Team B. He was special, no, special talent. But, but Sergio Busquets was special. He's, he's Messi, been special since. Messi, it's on record. Yes. When, 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 when Pep brought Sergio Busquets from Team B. Yes. To the first Barca yes. training. Yes. Mm -hmm. Messi walked in, saw him, went to Pep and said, like, this, this guy, guy this guy is the guy. He said, this guy can play. This yeah. guy is the guy. Yeah. The guy was so special from Titi. So, you know, be Pep, Pep, Pep says, uh, I mean, he knew that, and but he was not sure. But when <laughs> Messi, the Messi told him ah. that, when Messi told him that this guy can play, <laughs> that is when he knew. So, like, Pep used Rico Lewis two days, no, he said, no, no, you don't train again. <laughs> Go back to it. Well, the 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 that's beside the point now what Ferguson did and it was great was that yeah you see and what Muftar and Danny said it's not true Ferguson wasn't buying from Chelsea yeah. even at the time that Chelsea were not Chelsea he wasn't buying from Arsenal mm. he wasn't he wasn't buying he was buying from Spurs he wasn't buying from Villa. Liverpool yeah. yeah he wasn't buying from Liverpool he would never do that so when you say that this era, Pep, uh, Pep can't buy for Ferguson never bought from Liverpool. Which is why we play the Ferguson man? We are Chelsea players. Chelsea players at that time, and then no shall I for who he buy? <laughs> Ferguson was buying players, good players, and you see at that time there were several good players in other teams. Ferguson would go there, buy them, and make them great. You go and buy them and make them great. Now let me move on from that one and come to something that everybody underrates that I hate. How long Ferguson stayed at Manchester United? See, when you are in one institution and you have to always remind yourself that you have to be successful, you can't be comfortable. It's about one of the most difficult things to do. Anytime you make a move, it's a new challenge. Yeah. When you are the same place and you become a god and you become the one, Ferguson becomes Manchester United and he has to challenge himself to win. No manager can do that in the history of football. It won't happen. 
He was there for what, 26 years. Mm -hmm. If you like, make your guy try, make it see. Make it try. Make it make your you know, make your man. Make your man. Make it try. The G, oh. you'll, it, do, it, you'll do the work in 10 years, no worry. No, I want you to stay there for 26 years and continue no, 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 being successful. No, no, no. And continue. No, wait, wait. Age your age your wise, you're not saying. It, it, uh, what do you mean? How old is he? How old is he? Oh, I think he's retired from football when he was like what 67, 68. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but your man, how old, how old is your man? He just stayed there for some more years. No, it's boring. That's one of the things. It can be boring. Mm -hmm. But you see, Ferguson was there for how long? 27 years. years. And people also forget that when Ferguson came, his primary task, his primary task was to take Liverpool off the dominance in the Premier League. Knock them off their F pitch. Accomplished it in his final season. Said, <laughs> See, it's not as if Ferguson couldn't go to. Yeah. The guy had ambitions. After his ambitions, he was like, I am done. The job I came here to do, right now my soul and spirit can go and eat and drink and watch football for fun. I finished the Premier League. Ferguson has won the Premier League 13 times with Manchester United. In and 27 during, years. Yes, in 27 years. And That's during, terrible. That is, inc that is incredible. That's terrible outcome compared to Pep Guardiola's no, like seven years. No, no, I'll come to you <laughs> and say Pep has done nothing. Let me tell you, when Ferguson was the coach of my United, after almost every three years, there was a new competitor. People think this Pep era is not competitive. The Premier League is not competitive. Because of Pep. It's not because of Pep. Then it's because of Pep. It's because, it's because the other teams are not good enough. It's not Pep. <laughs> now come to it. When Ferguson was, it was, when Ferguson was coach, first was Blackburn. Mm -hmm. He had to beat Blackburn to win the league. Mm -hmm. Newcastle then came. Right. He, he beat Newcastle to win the league. That's a different challenge. Then, your man, Asivenga, came with a different brand of football nobody, nobody has seen before. He came to win the league. Ferguson beat him to win the league. Then Abramovich and Jose came. Two years, he had not won. Ferguson re-strategized and beat them three times in a row to win the league. Then Man City got money. Man City got money. Mm -hmm. They came to win. He beat them to win the league and said, me, I'm done. Who are, any challenger, who comes? When you come and I see you, I'll beat you. That's what he did. When Pep came, who has challenged Pep? Like, the Premier League is so bad now. You see, when I talk about the Premier League being a famous league now, the Premier League is at its all-time lowest. They at have, the moment they have the more the most the it, most and they have more money but yeah. yes the quality wise premier league is it's not a premier league of old where you have arsenal that was the proper top four when you spoke about top four proper these days you don't have top four you are playing top four and space and who are playing top four are you serious <laughs> those days <laughs> you have arsenal <laughs> chelsea yeah. space space uh, got to go after you no, <laughs> but they know when so, space, when space gets to top four they are happy it's a trophy for them we're talking about teams that in those days the reason why ferguson no team at the time could finish 90 points. 95 points was because no other team in the Premier League will allow you to win the number of games these teams are winning. They were that good as well. And Ferguson all the time had to beat those challenges to make sure that he was at the top. So when you finish 92 points, it doesn't mean that you are good though. You also have to check those you are competing against. <laughs> Finally on Pep. You see, Pep has never had to build anything. Never. He's never had to build any culture. Nothing. You see, shortly before Pep took over Barcelona, they were Champions League winners in 2006. They came in 2009. Yeah. That is a winning club. They, were, they won the La Liga. When he came, he changed his style. It's coaching. As for coaching, you can bring your principles. You can change your style. But it was a winning club. Whose fans in that generation knew what winning was about? When Ferguson came, a whole generation had passed. They didn't know what winning was about at my United. been relegated from the 1970s, come from the first division, and there was nothing happening there. Bro, nobody knew what winning was about. When Pep left Barca for Bayern Munich, Pep didn't go and teach Bayern Munich how to win anything. Mm -hmm. In fact, he went to fail them. Because the season before he went, they were treble winners. With Joe Henkis. He went there and he, he went to actually downgrade their level. For three years, he didn't show them anything. There was nothing Pep did in Bayern that they had not seen before. In fact, at some point, they told him that his football is boring. That Tiki Taka he wants to bring, they want to play high-flying wingers and Robin and Ribery. Even the two players said Pep for Casado. Though. Then he comes to City. In a year, in a year that they were Champions League semi-finalists for the first time in their history, they won the FA Cup before, Carabao Cup before, Premier League before, twice. Yeah. In that generation, the club was used to winning before he came. The club system and the club structure was set. Pep didn't build anything. He's a great coach. He came to build his team. But when it comes to culture, systems, Pep didn't do any of that. I want to see Pep go into a struggling team. Who generation can't even remember the last time they won anything? And they make them make money. You see, Pep didn't make Bassa make money. Yeah. They had their money. In fact, Pep can't remember Bassa. Eh, all the Bassa scandals started starting with Pep time. Okay. On the bomb, Pep 
Pep didn't make money for Barca. He lost them money. Pep didn't make money at Bayern Munich. He lost them money. Pep is the reason why Bayern Munich don't have Tony Cruz. Otherwise, by now, that Bayern Munich made for Kimmich and Greska. If you have Tony Cruz in their solid, Pep is the reason why it's not there. Pep comes to Man City. He didn't make Man City money. They had money already. Ferguson, everywhere he went, he made them good. He was doing good. End of story. This game plan. There isn't much to say, Charlie. I mean, this is why game plan is game plan. Hey, me, I, go, you know, like, I, I get this cross. I mean, me, I was prepared for this argument. I had read and debated and stuff. But me, Seth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they take me to go to school today. Um, zero five. I, the, the people have even stopped texting. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are jotting down their points. They are jotting down their points. <laughs> so, listeners, if you want to give it, hey, look, people have now started texting. <laughs> Well, not that, that texting. Uh, let me read the LPMs because we have to go in a, in a few minutes. Moftao says he has the results. Let me read this, get his results, and let's get out of here. From 2011, with 12 celebration contexts, concerts to support over 70 contemporary gospel ministers in Ghana, the next generation gospel ministers are ready to treat you to another concert dubbed Celebration of a New Dawn. This, this year's concert features Quindalin, Che Mensa, Rafia, Laudable Home, uh, JG, Kweku Kwame, Sonia Biekro, Kofi Nkrumah, Melody B, Mike Kessie, Lucy Nkrumah, Prince Danzel, um, Esi Hooper, Kofi Newell, Kevin Sasu, and Shadrach Mensa Kwesi. Date is Sunday, 21st of May at 4 p.m. Pastor Kojo from Paul PFK will be hosting us at the ICGC Liberty Temple at the Shaman Estate. Note is absolutely free. For further inquiries for the Next Generation Ministers concert, and to support it, 0240-084-722. That's 0240-084-722. This pro project is powered by Christocentric.com and supported by Joy 99.7 FM. Also to say that Mr. Christocentric, uh, Fifi Falsing today, is marking 17 years on radio. JJ! 17 years. 17 years. Today is his 17th anniversary on radio. Mr. Christocentric. If God Pep likes, you stay at City for 17 years. You go see how the <laughs> 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 we beg, It's we okay, beg. it's okay, it's ah, we okay. We don't have stray bullets. <laughs> anyway, for over 50 years, Duraplast, your reliable partner for quality plastic products such as PVC and HDPE pipes of various uh, sizes have over the years um, progressed to become a leader in the plastic industry in West Africa and parts of Central Africa. Water tank is here. The ultimate tank for water storage by Duraplast comes with an optional water level indicator that lets you know exactly how much water you have in your water tank. If it's 5,000 liters, it means 5,000 liters. And of course, it's very durable. Water tank, water tank. Remember, Duraplast, where it goes, water flows. Life is a dream. It is historic, iconic, and thrilling. Life is a dream is a play birth in Spain in 1635. Caught the eyes of the world and now in Africa, in Ghana, it's the Afrocentric edition that is done by Latif Abubakar. It's a Spain-Ghana production and it will be live at the Accra International Conference Center on the 27th and 28th of this month. Two shows each day, 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. 150 CDs. Dial this number to get your ticket. Star 447 star 1092 hash. That's star 447 star 1092 hash to grab your tickets or visit at Latif Globe on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for details. You can get an early bird ticket for 100 CDs before the 19th of May. And don't forget that on Joy um, 99.7 FM, we are proud to be powering together with Joy Prime and Hits FM cues and lyrics. It's your Sunday night just getting more exciting. It's a music competition that aims at unearthing music potential in contestants while providing Joy Prime's cherished viewers the ultimate entertainment. Watch the 12 body musicians as they journey to stardom. It's on Sundays, 8.30 p.m., only on Joy Prime. Cues and lyrics bring you on the music. Joy Prime is the ultimate experience. Joy 99.7 FM. Time to call it a day. Muftao, what, have you, what do you have for us? After the end of the debate, <laughs> <laughs> no, but this one you for do Twitter posts. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter posts. posts. No, yeah. but, let, let the but people yes, you, yes. Are you suggesting that my scores are biased? No, no. You said I don't trust. I don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> because you declared you declared that you were you were you, yes. True, 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 true. Let's turn in the space. Ah, ah. We can't let move that because Pep um, Pep Pep is a 
uh, what do you call it? Muftar is a Pepsi sympathizer, he said. All right, let me, uh, let me read the final few comments and then go. Um, this one says, per Danny's submissions, Ferguson spends huge money on players, same as Pep. I 100% agree with Sicho's submissions too. Pep went to teams that have money and a great team after Barcelona. Okay, this is Lawrence. He says, Sicho, you do all. <laughs> Oh, Charlie! Oh, Charlie! Oh, this one, this one says, Oh, Charlie, I've been schooled, oh. <laughs> Me too, I go take flex more. No, this is, this is why this is game one. This is why this is game one. Hot tea bread! Hot tea bread! bread. <laughs> nah, this is why this is game one. Nah, uh, he says, Gary, I greet you all. Danny had good points to debate, but his focus was on the other managers. Um, to Ferguson. Pep is a good coach. EPL is not competitive enough. Bro. I agree with Ticho. 99 ideas for the team. Charlie. Pepe, <laughs> Daniel should remember Pepe that Ferguson <laughs> locked a great team, uh, Liverpool, up the pitch. They had not won the league for 26 years and he built three squads, instilling a winning culture. Fergie's time alone is a legacy he left behind. This is from Nkrumah Boateng in Takwa. And that, guys, is how we end the show. Let me get a final comment. Guys, this is Joe Minutes. To simplify what Sicho said, let's compare the starting points of Jose and Pep in Roma and City, respectively. I mean, for what they achieved in their early years. And you will know that Sicho is right about everything he said. All right, Charlie, thank you very much, guys. Danny and Sicho, hey. you say? Sicho is post. too we much. Twitter, right Twitter post. Twitter post. We go, uh, <laughs> Apple and Tim from Conferendia. He says Sicho be too, too much. Sicho be too much. <laughs> Twitter I, post. I, Twitter post. We'll do Twitter post and look at the results later. <laughs> Fantastic. With three minutes to go today, today has been a wonderful show. Charlie, wonderful show. Thank you to Moftal for giving us correct backing vocals. He said, "Ask Daddy the bad guy. Ask Daddy the dude take it. Then I have to call him." Nah, this is what a research show gives you, and we really appreciate the guys for bringing us such erudite analysis. My name is Gary Al Smith, sitting in for Fento Tahiru. We'll be back next week with more. Time now for Lexus Bill and Drive Time on Joe.